with too much toxicity. I'm not saying he's inoculated that's not the case. But he's showing us that what does happen is when we have these group inoculations, and one of the theories is that if a kid has already mercury toxicity and other toxicities, and then has one of these massive inoculations, that it can send them over the edge, even overnight. Well, you have patients. You have patients that have, that, that, that have done that, don't you? Don't you have twins? Yep. You have twins who were normal, right? Mm -hmm. and, and then they got their uh, massive inoculations, and within how many days? I think it was overnight. Overnight. Yeah. Overnight, overnight they began to see symptoms of autism. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So uh, autism is very complicated, and I don't think anybody should ever say an inoculation can cause it. Um, I don't believe one inoculation can cause it. I believe if, for example, someone is already overloaded with those toxins and the inoculation occurs, and the inoculation has too much mercury in it or one of the other substances, that that's what pushes us over the edge. Yeah. Yeah. You, you have other brain troubles with kids, right? Have you had any other uh, injuries, like injuries with brain? We get, uh, we've had a few high school uh, athletes. Oh, the athletes with the brain. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know what? There's a lot of brain injury now. I want, I want to reveal something to you. This is a divine truth that I'm revealing to you now. You do not have to hit your head to get a concussion. Mm -hmm. You do not have to hit your head. Everybody thinks you have to hit your head. Forget it. You don't have to do that ever. You know why? Because the brain sits in the skull, and the skull is a hard rock, and the inside of the skull is jagged. So when a football player, and these football players get concussions, and they don't hit their head all the time, but they're jarred like this. I've had patients from the, from the roller coaster. And from that big ride they have over here, I think, I, I don't remember where it is, not very far. So you go way high up on this thing, and you sit in the chair, and then they let you go, all the way to the bottom. Your brain is hitting the inside of the skull. And that is miserable on the brain. It injures the brain. So we have to be careful about that. Now, we can help repair that with hyperbaric oxygen therapy. See, because not only does oxygen sustain our life? Not only do we need it to keep the body and soul together so that we're not going to be someplace else and not here right now, we, we have to be able to understand that we got to keep it together. So we get crazy, and I get crazy when I start talking about it. So what happens with the whole situation is that we need oxygen to sustain our life. And oxygen is the most important thing that sustains our life. And, and oxygen is the most important healing element on earth. Without oxygen, we will not heal anything. Why do you think hospitals spend $100 million on installing oxygen in every room and every bed? The medical piping is millions and millions of dollars because they know that if a person has a crisis they need oxygen immediately they plug them in so how do you get more oxygen oh you better start working okay anybody who wants to be and, and if you don't get it tonight don't worry about it because you can come to the department tomorrow or any other day yes sir can i ask you about the eyes macular degeneration cataract glaucoma yes like yes 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 there is a lot of work done to show <laughs> that several things need to be done for ocular protection one of them has to be nutritional work the other oxygen is extremely important from here to here we use 52 percent of all the oxygen that we consume from here to here and it's about evenly divided between the brain and the eyes because the eyes are very complicated very very complicated and I happen to have which is one of my prized possessions written by one of my dear friends and mentors for many years Dr. K.K. Jane is a, uh, a hyperbaric physician in Switzerland 
and he has written the medical textbook on hyperbaric medicine for years and years and years. He updates it about every four or five years. And there's a whole chapter on the eyes in that book. Mm -hmm. And as long as you use it in this building, mm -hmm. or give me a million dollar deposit, <laughs> you can do anything you want and you will learn so much. So much. And yes, I have patients with glaucoma. Justin, you have patients with glaucoma, don't you? Yes. And you have patients with, with other eye uh, stuff? MACD as well. Oh, MACD, okay, macular degeneration. And, and they're doing okay? Better? Yes. Good. Okay. Amen. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Is there any I, question? I do have a question about, is there any concerns that we should, like, under pressure? I know oxygen sound, you know, it's very important, but is there anything you need to be concerned about? Uh, beforehand, going under pressure. No, except your ears are going to be uncomfortable a little bit. Okay. You know, it's like flying in an airplane. It really mimics flying in an airplane. And uh, and I, I have flown all the way. I went to school in Europe when I was very, very young, and uh, I got used to that stuff. But then I learned to fly when I was, I think, in my 30s. And there was no pressurization. I was at the mercy of being at the altitude I was. And that was really hard for me. I used to, I, I used to not be able to hear for, for an hour or two. People would be talking to me and I couldn't hear them. So those kind of things you, you adjust to and you learn how to clear, and, and that's, that's it. But no, there's no problem. You know, the problem would be if, if we put you in a chamber. I once had a chamber made, a big one, um, and it was for divers. We would put a diver down there 165 feet. You know, you're, you're going to go down very little feet, 11 feet, 17 feet, 20 feet, that's it. So your, your pressure level is not going to be so humongous. Does that make any sense? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. So that's why we go very, very slowly. And Justin can show you the chart of, of where you go and what pressures you are and the relationship to atmospheric and relationship to the depth of seawater. Justin knows all of that. He's brilliant. That's why he's here with me. And I'm brilliant, too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anything else? Any other questions? Yes? I have a question. I, I have read things where it says that ozone or oxygen can cause cancer. What, well, now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Ozone and oxygen are totally different things. Okay. Um, ozonation is an incredible way of stopping bacterial, microbial, fungal, all kinds of infestations. And anything that will cause infestations to die off is going to cause human being to die off if there's too much of it. Oh, the only thing that that's probably not true of is oxygen if there's too much of it for a little while. But you can have oxygen toxicity if you are exposed to more oxygen than you can metabolize for a long period of time. A long period of time would probably be anywhere in excess of 8 to 10 hours. And I don't know anybody who's been in the chamber for that long except diving accidents. I had one... I had one diver in the chamber a day and a half. We had a special chamber made where we had a compartment. We put him in there. He had to stay in there because he had to decompress very, very slowly because he had the bends and he would have died. So we were able to save his life. But that, that is a very different situation. Uh, ozone is something that is administered very carefully. It's pretty magic because it will do all kinds of things. It, it will kill fungus, it will kill bacteria, uh, it, it can also serve as an oxygenating agent for cancer treatment, but it's got to be used much more carefully in terms of dosing because it's a very powerful, very, very powerful oxidative agent. So you got to, first of all, the equipment usually is made so that it, it can't go wrong. I mean, it's really hard to make it go wrong. So that's one good thing. And then people have to be trained properly to use it. So that, that's about it. Did you hear me there? Okay. Yeah. So it, it can be good. You don't want to breathe ozone. You don't want to go into an ozone chamber or room filled with ozone. You can have a little bit of ozone floating around, but you don't want a lot of ozone. Okay? 
All right, good. Okay, are there any other... Uh, you know what? We're, we're going to be here all night, aren't we? Mm -hmm. I don't know. What time is it? Is it? It's 6.35. I don't care. I'm fine. I'm doing everything fine, but I don't want to keep everybody. We're fine. Okay. So what, what, what more questions have we? Any? Think of some. If you do, let me know. So I'll, I'll just start babbling. Any questions, raise your hand, okay? So, well, I, I just have to yes. this. Um, our daughter did, did the treatment to heal quickly from having an operation. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my that, goodness. Can you speak about that? Because it was very effective. Oh. Years and years ago, I had a woman walk in to the institute where I was, and she looked like she'd been through the Taliban war. She was a mess because of her plastic surgery. And I looked at her and I thought, oh my God, this poor woman, what did she do? And she just wanted a lot of plastic surgery done all at once. The surgeon never should have done it. Should have done a little bit here and a little bit there and heal about and then do a little bit more and then heal again. And Well, anyway, he did the one job fits all type thing. And she said, uh, the, the doctor said you might be able to help me heal. I'm not healing very well. And I wanted to say, well, no wonder. I mean, you've got every part of your neck and head and face has been done. And so I said, let's do hyperbarics. Come every day for one week and three times a week for two weeks, and we'll start a healing cascade. And we started a healing cascade, mm. and that woman was healing so fast it was wild. I was I, I prayed to God in Mass the next morning. I said, Lord, you saved my butt. <laughs> Did you get every day for a while? For a week. For a week. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's a, that's called jump start. Yeah. Yeah. For an hour, hour and a half, is it about? Well, uh, 70 minutes or 70 thereabouts, minutes. yeah. Yeah. You're in there now and a half, I guess. Okay. So what else? Okay, am I done? Well, I I can be a test to, to how wonderful it is. I love it. Like, sometimes people are afraid to get in it. They might yeah. think they have claustrophobia. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's a more relaxing, wonderful thing to do. Well, so. let me tell you something. You talk about claustrophobia. Our chambers, you lay in there, you look around, you see everywhere, you yeah. see the person. If you need to have somebody sit next to you there and stare at you, we'll provide you with a chair for them. No big problem. That's easy. When I helped Mother Teresa treat lepers in India, we had a chamber that was 12 feet long, solid steel, one eight-inch window like that wow. in the top of it. Wow. Now, you talk about claustrophobia. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. I was so bad that Mother Teresa said to me, she said, Donald, you do not look well. <laughs> and I laughed and I said, I don't like being in there. I will tell Dr. Hughes he will make you some medicine. So she came back with this little bottle the next day, and it said holy water on it. And I said, what is this? And, he, and she said, Dr. Hughes said for you to drink this when you get in the chamber after they close the door. So I did, and I discovered it was holy vodka. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> holy vodka. <laughs> Doc, well, Dr. Hughes was behind this. Yeah, yeah. She told him to make me some medicine. Yes. That medicine. Uh -huh. So I, he said, did that medicine I gave you help? I said, David, that was vodka. He said, well, I want you to use it three times. I'll give you three bottles. Use it three times, and then you won't give a damn anymore about it. <laughs> and you know what? He was totally right. Totally right. Do you, do you right. give holy water to everybody once a year? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I told Mother Teresa, I said, that wasn't holy water, it was holy vodka. <laughs> she said, well, you know, I know he likes to drink vodka. <laughs> so, end of discussion on that one, right? Well, yeah, and so, and Justin knows exactly what to do. People make sure everything's perfect yes, all the time. And amen. I've heard some concerns before, and I'll tell them, you know, you're an expert there. And oh, yeah. Yeah, it's great. To go into the chambers. Well, and watch and a movie. Even they can watch a movie. You can watch your movies. Music. You can bring your own stuff from home. Whatever yeah. you want. Yeah. How are you doing with your ratings? Is everybody alive? Everybody's alive. Amen. Baby. Talk, talk about how it makes people look younger. Well, there's a lot of work done 
uh, with hyperbarics and uh, and youthful orientation. But that's a it's a process that you have to you have to maintain high levels of oxygen. And um, our friend uh, or whoever. Uh, what's his name? Michael Jackson. Mm -hmm. He got burned in a Pepsi commercial. Right. And he was supposed to go to the chamber every day for 60 days, two months. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He went one day, and it was too much. You know, you go to the hospital for him, it's a whole big charade. So he bought a hyperbaric chamber, much like what we have. Mm -hmm. And he went every day, because he got burned in that commercial, his face mm -hmm. burned. Yeah. And it, it healed him. Mm -hmm. And of course, he had a little reconstructive stuff, too, done. But he was looking pretty good after that. Mm -hmm. He didn't look good before I saw him at the hospital. No good. Horrible. Horrible. Yeah. Well, he burned his burned. He burned his hair up. He was a mess. Not not a good thing. So we have to uh, we have to look at the circumstances and the conditions. But um, I do I do have these women from Argentina that fly in about about every eight or nine months. And they stay for two, three weeks. They go every day in the chamber. Mm -hmm. And I said to one of them, I said, it's very expensive for you to do this. She said, I know. I said, well, I'm sure you do know, but why do you keep doing it? And she made me, she said like this, and she, she took my fingers and she said, pull my skin up. I pulled her skin up, and it went right back down. And she said, I couldn't do that before. Oh, wow. When I pulled my skin up, it stayed up and didn't want to go back down, and I used to have to do this and put cream on it and whatever. So I said, okay, baby, whatever, float your boat. <laughs> if, that, if you come from Argentina for that, just come. It works. How old was she? Or is she? Oh, I don't, you know, 70 sometimes. Yeah. She's real tight skin. Yeah, yes. I saw you on Ty Bollinger interview with the one that talks about cancer. Oh, yes. Are there any particular types of cancer that respond more? Well, <clears throat> there's not a lot of research on that. But the bottom line is, if you know that it's going to slow the replication rate of the cancer cell, then the first thing I would do is buy into a nutritional program that does the same thing. And carbs being eliminated from the diet as much as humanly possible. And you've got some experts around here who have big whips and they can teach you how to do it. Uh, Liliana is one of them, right? Yeah. She has chains and, and whips and all kinds of things, <laughs> but she doesn't use them very often. But she can help you understand what to do. So the more of these things we do, then if you can get 10% reduction here and 10% there and 20% there and don't forget about water water is so important and we're all dehydrating we think because we have some crazy liquid in our body that we're, we're going to have hydration that is foolishness we need water H2O, water how much do we need? we need about one half ounce of water per day per pound of body weight and it's got to be good, clean water. And don't drink distilled water. Distilled water is devoid of minerals. And it's like a magnet. When it goes through your body, it collects the minerals, goes in you, minerals and you pee them out. You don't want that, do you? You want to have minerals in your body. Organic minerals and not crushed up rocks. Not crushed up rocks. You want to get calcium? You don't get crushed up rock calcium. Get it from a plant, because then it's assimilatable into your body. Okay? Good. Anything else? One question to your left. Oh, yes, yes. If there's still water, do you believe in adding trace uh, minerals? You've got to have minerals. You've got to have can, minerals. You can buy trace minerals. Oh, yeah, yeah, you put it in the water, absolutely, yeah. And that, would that... Oh, yeah, yeah, I have that water. I have that machine at home that takes everything out of the water, right. including the water, practically. <laughs> but I, um, I have the, I use silica, and, and I sell, I think it's called cell power, cell food. Uh -huh. They sell it up here. I have it in my kitchen, right by my little sink that purifies all the water, and I have, I have seven, I don't know what they do, but I have seven of these big filter things underneath, and then a, a reverse osmosis machine, uh -huh. All of this stuff, because I like clear, I drink water like I'm, I drown in it. Hmm. You, 
Do you believe in the MMTR, MMTR, MMTR water where they, <coughs> that they used the, that came out of Chernobyl? Remember that side? Oh, for the radiation? Yes, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, Does that, that stuff, but you, you know what? When we look at something that might be therapeutic for something, it's like aspirin is great for a headache, but don't take it every day. Mm -hmm. But if you need it, use it, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, a little bit of... Maybe a jigger of vodka is might, mighty nice for going in the hyperbaric chamber, but don't do it every day. Oh, that was a terrible thing to say. Okay. Holy water. Holy water. Do you have anything else? I think you covered everything. I did? Can I go home now? <laughs> any questions? Any guys have any questions? Yes. Yes. Okay, so we all know now what our oxygen is. What? What's the normal range? What should it be? What should it be? Well, if it's 98, for me, that's almost orgasmic. 98. Mm. That means good, right? Okay. Um, if it's 95, that's good. If it's 93, that's okay. If it's 90, uh, I'm going to start breathing better. And I can teach you how to up it. You sit in a chair and you empty your lungs of all the crap. And we have crap in our lungs. It's carbon dioxide and garbage gas that needs to be expelled. And if we breathe out just a little bit, we can only breathe in just a little bit, and all those other gases stay there, and they keep absorbing into our blood. So that's going to lower our oxygen level, see? So what we need to do is exhale first all the way out. All the way and then all the way in, slowly and gently. All the way in. And then all the way out. Force it out. And then all the way in. Slowly. And then through your mouth, exhale. If we inhale through our nose, it's magnificent. All the way, all the way. And then exhale. I can almost guarantee you, if you even had an 88 oxygen level, and you did this for five minutes, if you get a little lightheaded quick, because you're getting lightheaded, you don't want to get too lightheaded. Um, but then you can play with it and figure out how it's going to work. But you could generally, well, I hardly ever fail with anybody raising it to 98. Because a lot of times we are just simply lazy breathers. Lazy breathers don't, don't go very far. Okay? All right, good. Any other questions? Just remember, oxygen is the most important thing your body uses and needs. And without it, we take the trip. How much does it cost here? How much does it cost here? Yeah, well, it depends. It depends on the, the length of time and how long you're in the chamber. Um, I think the cost for a, a 70, no, a 90-minute treatment is, uh, is $250. And then that's a special treatment, though. It's different. Um, the normal treatment is 215 and then it goes down. And the time goes down a little bit too. It's not the same length of time. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, but a lot better than two thousand eighty dollars. Oh, it's two thousand eighty dollars a treatment. They get billed. And here's the thing: the patient is responsible for twenty percent, even if it's one of the few things insurance covers, which they don't cover much. But if it's one of the few things, like they will cover to save a leg from amputation, because they know it's the only thing that'll work. Mm -hmm. And they, if you have a flesh-eating bacteria, they'll pay for that. If you have some of the conditions like carbon monoxide poisoning, if you are dying of carbon monoxide poisoning and you come to my hyperbaric department, I will fix you. Mm -hmm. There is nothing else on earth that will do that. So the insurance companies know that. So they would be sued through the roof if they didn't cover it. So they cover that. There are things like that that they cover. There are 14 out of almost 200 conditions that are treatable, mm -hmm. that they cover for. Yeah. So it's, it's funny because I've tried to, my dream 
is to create a non-profit hyperbaric organization. Mm -hmm. That, and I'm, I'm playing with this now with the soldiers because we can fix brain injury. Mm -hmm. yes. We can literally fix brain injury that the yes. soldiers have. Not, not, not give them drugs to, to make zombies out of them mm -hmm. so they forget they have a problem. But we can fix it. And, and I have a, there's a movie on uh, RANRI, that's my research institute. RANRI stands for Richard A. Neubauer Research Institute. And the, the website is ranri.org, R-A-N-R-I. There's a movie there that gives credibility to what I'm saying. So I'm not even asking to be believed. Forget what I said. You watch the movie that pops up. And there's congressmen and senators there that talk. One congressman says, we know hyperbaric oxygen therapy will help our soldiers, and we got to do everything we can. And there's a general that we treated who's also interviewed and talked about in that, in that thing. And that gives credibility to, you know, because anybody can say anything about anything. Yes. And what was that? Ran Ran Ranri, R-A-N-R-I. R-I dot org. Dot org. And then I think and what that is your dream? I, you said it so fast. What's your dream? Tell me your dream. My dream is to make a nonprofit organization to get um, some donated monies and equipment to cut the cost. Because the equipment we have brand new in our place is uh, 150, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, the back office, 9, 10, about $950,000. And at 13% interest, um, that's very expensive to run, you know? But I want a place with a lot of, I want a big chamber I can put in maybe 10 people, and, and I had before like a lot of chambers, but it wasn't my dream. My dream is to give people hyperbarics, whether they have the money or not, one way or another. And to hire a lawyer to do nothing but fight the insurance company. Mm -hmm. okay. that, that's our challenge. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, is it like maintenance? Do you come every couple of months, or does it just depend on what you're looking for? Are oh, you, you mean for hyperbarics? Yes. Oh, why to do it? And yeah. When to do it? I mean, does it depend on why you're coming? Or, or well, you first of all, I would look at my condition. If I had something treatable that I needed to treat and fix, I would do that. And sometimes I need my nutritional program to go right along with it. Exercise is very important because exercise causes you to breathe better and increases your oxygen levels. So that's very important. Water. I didn't talk about water. Do I have time to talk a little bit about water? Yeah. Okay. So you're going to keep me here all night, aren't you? <laughs> as long as everyone else wants to be here. <laughs> I, I am uh, <laughs> I'm very interested in water. Water, in fact, I would love water, Justin. If you could find me some water. Yeah, I'm going to Justin, that's right. We would be, Justin. We would be Justin. so grateful Justin. to you. Okay. Yes, because I'm getting parched mouth now. All right. So, water does two things. Water gets rid of our waste. And if we don't have enough water to get rid of our waste, we're going to build up waste. We're going to reabsorb crap. Do you understand what that means? We're going to do it. It's like eating out of a toilet. You don't want to do that. We must cleanse our body. And if we don't drink enough water, we're not going to do that. And then the second thing water does, it supplies the basic material, the building material for every single bodily fluid we have. Every single one we have. You know that if you don't have enough water in your body, your manufacturing of blood... Oh, my, you're trying to tell me my bosom's showing? <laughs> Thank you. If I had something worth showing, I wouldn't mind. That was a long time ago. <laughs> but I did have it at one time. But all things come and go. Mm -hmm. So what happens is when we need to manufacture blood, the prime component for the manufacture of blood is water. Now, what if there ain't enough water in my body to make blood at the right consistency that it needs to be? You know what? It's going to be too thick. 